worship together. We're excited to worship him. We're excited for all the Lord is doing in our lives and in our midst. And I'm so glad you come to worship with us this morning. For those here in person, thank you for being here today. And for those of you watching online today, we welcome you this morning as well. And I would invite you to battle with me as we take a moment to pray together. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful for this day of worship. Lord, we are so grateful for the gift of faith that we have just sung about together. Father, I thank you today for the faith of Abraham and Sarah. I thank you, Lord, for the faith of so many who have gone before us, both in Scripture and those we have known in our lives who have evidenced great faith. And Father, as we focus today, on women of faith in Scripture, starting today and over the next few Sundays, Lord, I pray that our powerful narratives of the women that we talk about over the next several weeks will help all of us to draw closer to you. And I pray that their lives of faith would inspire and encourage us, Lord, to continue pressing on in the faith to which you have called us. And we lift this prayer together today in Jesus' name. And everybody said together, amen. amen. Well, I'll invite you to remain standing as we continue our worship together. This next hymn, Dear Lord, Our Father of Mankind. Would you sing with us as we worship? And I do invite the children to be dismissed at this time. Let's sing together. Abraham, for I have made you the father 
of a multitude of nations. And then scrolling down to verses 15 through 16. And then God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her name Sarai, but Sarah will be her name. I will bless her, and indeed, I will give you a son by her, and then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. May God bless the reading of his word today, and as we transition to a prayer time this morning, uh, share with you um, just a quick announcement as well. Uh, the church council will meet today at 5 p.m. in the fellowship hall. And so we'll meet in person with masks and social distancing downstairs. And for those of you that are on church council, I would appreciate you coming if you're able. And then uh, for our prayer time today, just a couple of needs that I want to make mention of. Uh, we do have a couple of um, surgeries coming up in the life of our church family that we want to be mindful of. Uh, so on May 18th, uh, Richard Moore is, is scheduled for surgery. Uh, pending uh, clearance from the doctor, so Richard, we will be lifting you up to the Lord in prayer. Also, uh, Edna is scheduled for surgery on May 27th, and so please pray for Edna. She um, is, is certainly having some issues with her arm and hand and the nerves there, so we're praying for her to regain full use and full feeling there. Um, also, Cal, it's so good to see you with us today. Uh, Cal will be scheduled for triple bypass surgery later in the month of May. Uh, he'll be meeting with a surgeon on May 12th to get that scheduled. And so, Cal, you will be in our prayers. And so good to see you and Donna back with us today. I know there are other needs in the life of our church. If you have a need, if you would just let that be known by the lifting of your hand so that as your pastor I can be mind mindful of that and I can remember to call your name in prayer this week. And so, God knows all that we have need of, even before we ask. And some of what we're talking about today is the faith of Sarah. And so keeping the faith of Sarah in mind as we read in Scripture today, I also encourage you to have great faith in the Lord, to trust that God is able, amen? To trust that God's plan and His will are perfect for our lives. To trust uh, that we can give it all to the Lord and know that he knows what's right and best for your life and for mine. And so with that, I invite you to bow, bow with me as we pray and then we'll have a time of silent meditation and reflection together before the message. Would you bow with me please? Father, we again thank you for today. And Lord, it is a privilege to come before you and bring our needs to you. And God, we not only bring our needs before you today, but we also bring our praise before you today. For Lord, you have given us breath and life, and you have given us, Lord, um, a mind and a changed will to serve and to love you. So help us to do that, Lord, this day. And I pray for all under the sound of my voice this morning, Lord, who need um, increased faith in their lives. Holy Spirit, would you please work and move and intercede in each of our lives to increase our faith. And Lord, it's um, such a joy knowing that you invite us to bring our needs before you. And so Lord, we do that today as you have commanded us to do in Scripture what you said in 1 Peter to cast all of our cares upon you for your care for us, O oh God. So today, Lord, for the needs of surgery we mentioned coming up this month, we call these names before your throne today, asking for healing and wellness, Lord. Father, for other needs on the prayer list that we're keeping each week, we call these needs before you, Lord. For every hand that was raised today, Lord, we lift our hearts to you and bring our needs before you. Father, as we now have a time of silent prayer and meditation, I pray that you would speak to our hearts as you prepare us for the message you have for us today. And we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. <laughs>
so we began this series talking about women of faith with Sarah, the promised mother. Next week, Lord willing, we will talk about Leah, the forgotten mother. Um, two weeks, Lord willing, with Lord willing, we will talk about Jochebed, the sacrificial mother. And then we'll also focus from the book of Ruth on Naomi, the spiritual mother. Today, as we begin this series, focus on these beautiful four women of Scripture. We are reminded today of Sarah's story from the book of Genesis. And so, a couple of things I want to share with you about Sarah's story today. And first is this, is Sarah's story involves a promise from God. This is good for us to know because your story also involves a promise from God. We know the story well. I'm sure that God promised to Sarah a promise that was impossible with man, but possible with God. Think about Sarah's story with me for a moment, and it, and it really does seem like an impossible task that God would promise a son to Abraham and Sarah when they were well in, advanced in years. It, it seems like a, a story of impossibility so much uh, that, that they almost laugh at God as he promised this to them in their later years. If we really think about Sarah's story, it really is one that at the outset seems to be filled with a story of doubt. Could God do what God says he's going to do? Sarah's story seems to be one of disbelief. Can I really believe that God is going to do what he says he's going to do? And yet we know Sarah's story is a story of patience. How many moms here today know that motherhood is a story of patience? Amen? Sarah's story is a story of patience. And yet we know her story is also one of perseverance, that she had to persevere and keep trusting and believing what God said he would do. All of this to say that Sarah's story did not come easy. And you know what? I'm willing to guess that your story of faith also hasn't come easy. I'm guessing about your story of faith today that much like Sarah's story, there's probably been some doubt. There's probably been some disbelief. There has likely been some discouragement in your story, just as it was in Sarah's story. Just as Sarah had a story that mattered to God, so I want you to know today that your story, too, matters to God. Everything about your story, even the parts of your story that you're not proud of, even the parts of your story that you would go back and do a little bit differently if you could, all of those elements of your story matter to God. And maybe like Sarah, maybe like her story, maybe your story also at times seems impossible. Perhaps like Sarah, your story is a story of doubt, or maybe like Sarah, your story is a story, too, of unbelief at times. Ultimately, though, through the eyes of God, what I want you to see today about Sarah's story and about your story is that Sarah's story is a story about promise. Her story is a very powerful story about the promises of God in her life. And whatever your story might be today, I want you to know, too, without a doubt, your story is powerful because God is working in and through your story. And I pray today that as we look at Sarah, that you would see uh, her story as one that draws you near to God in faith and near to the Lord to trust his word just as it is spoken to you, much like God spoke his word to Sarah. And so we focus today on Sarah's story as a promise 
from God. Sarah being the promised mother, God's word has so much to say about her story and about your story as well. But I want you to listen to some of these New Testament verses of scripture that are so powerful to complement what we've read together from Genesis 17 about God promising. I call your attention again to Genesis 17 Verse 16, that uh, God told Abraham about Sarah, that God said, I will bless her, and she will be a mother of, of nations, and kings of peoples will come from her. You see, we never know what God is going to do through our story, do we? We, we never really know for sure how God is going to reward and bless our faith with whatever walk of life you're in today. These New Testament scriptures give us a reminder about the promises of God to Sarah. I'll go slow on these, but uh, there are about seven scriptures from the New Testament that I want to read for you. And if you are inclined to write these down and look at them later, I know it will encourage you as we think about God's promises to Sarah. One of these is from Romans chapter 4, verse 13. For the promise to Abraham or to his descendants that he would be heir of the world was not through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Romans 9, verse 9. For this is the word of promise. At this time, I will come and Sarah will have a son. God did what he said he would do. Amen? Amen. God did exactly what he said he would do. Galatians chapter 3, verse 29. Uh, this relates our story to that of Abraham and Sarah. Galatians 3, verse 29. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants, heirs according to the promise. And so did you know that your life is a fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham and Sarah. Galatians 4, verse 28, and you, brothers and sisters, like Isaac, you ready for this, are children of promise. Again, as, as God's people, we are the fulfillment, part of the fulfillment of what God promised to them all the way back in Genesis. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6, to be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. All of these verses about promise. And then one more from Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13. For when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear an oath by no one greater, he swore by himself. Certainly today, Sarah's story involved a promise from God. And I want you to know today, as application to this message, so your story too involves a great promise from God. Notice second about Sarah's story today. Sarah's story not only involves a promise from God, but Sarah's story involves a partnership. This is a beautiful display in scripture uh, for, for women and, and, and moms today. Uh, Sarah's story involves a partnership, and this partnership is twofold. First, there is uh, the most important partnership in any of our lives, and that is our partnership with God, knowing, uh, can I encourage you today, knowing that you don't have to walk through this life alone because God has promised to you as his child to be with you. I, I remember being a, a teenager and facing some rough times in life. I remember praying back to God Often his promise in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, I will never leave you and never forsake you. And so for those of you having surgery this month, know that God is with you in the pre-op room. God is with you in 
the surgery room. God is with you in the post-op room. That this promise involves a partnership with the Lord that we do not have to do this by ourselves. And so for those of you that are single by God's plan and design in your life, you have a wonderful partnership with God to help you make it through. For those of you widowed, um, as part of God's unexplained plan for your life, you have a, a treasured partnership with God to help you make it through. For those of you divorced or single, a single parent raising children by yourself, you have an amazing partnership with God to help you make it through. Also, Sarah's story involves a partnership with her spouse. And so for those of you that are married today, I, I pray God's blessings over your marriage, that that would be fulfilled as God intended that to be. And I pray that you would have a wonderful, godly partnership with your spouse, with the spouse God has given you. Today I'm mindful, and as we uh, go into Mother's Day next week, I'm mindful of the many uh, single moms and uh, single dads as well who do your job faithfully as a parent. And I pray that God would give you an extra measure of strength and wisdom as you go through. I, I did a little research about single parents, and I wanted to bring some of this to you today uh, for your consideration. And um, so statistically, there are over 11 million single parent families in our nation. Um, 80, let me get these statistics right here. Um, so 34% so of single parent households were classified in a poverty level. 25.9% of single parent households involved single parents that were jobless for the entire year. 27.8% of single parent households fell into a classification of being food insecure. And I thank God for the food ministry that many of you do through the life of this church that blesses many families who fall under the category of being food insecure. You see, once largely limited to poor women and minorities, single motherhood is now becoming the new norm. This prevalence is due in part to the growing trend of children being born outside of marriage, a societal trend that was unheard of decades ago. About four out of ten children were born to unwed mothers. Nearly two-thirds were born to mothers under the age of 30. Today, one in four children under the age of 18, about 15.7 million children are being raised without a father. Of all single-parent families in the U.S., single mothers make up the majority. I thank God today for uh, the ministry that Kelly does, uh, that Koinonia does, to our mother's support group, getting a great, wonderful group of moms who I pray for often, by the way, uh, giving, God giving them an extra measure of strength and encouragement to help them in their journey. You see, we learn from Sarah's story that this involves a partnership, a partnership with God, and for those married, a partnership with spouse. Notice today, um, another part of Sarah, Sarah's story tells us that it is a promise of faith. I want to give you um, Sarah's story of all strict faith, and I, I was reminded yesterday of a very painful lesson about faith, and so I brought something to illustrate this for us today. By the way, how many of you enjoyed a beautiful spring day yesterday? Did anybody? Uh, such a beautiful day. Uh, hopefully you had some time to just maybe get some chores done. I, I know a lot of this of chores was what uh, the instruction manual called about a five-hour project 
And I want to tell you, for me, that five-hour project, this is how it went and how it's still going. So it started out as a two-hour project Friday night. And part two continued yesterday morning about 9.45 in the morning and turned into about an eight-hour project yesterday. Now, this five-hour project after 10 hours is still going, all right? Uh, I'm hoping it's going to get wrapped up today, but um, we ventured to buy a backdoor swing set for our four-year-old Luke. And so I, I would tell you, um, you know, my youngest son was right there with me every step of the way. Friday night, he was pulling out the slide. Saturday morning, he was with me pretty much the entire day. And he was a little bit frustrated by about 6 o'clock when it wasn't finished yet. And I told him we were taking a break. And he said, no, we're not taking a break, man. And we got to finish this thing. Well, as I was putting the tools up about, um, about 530, you know, these, uh, these little uh, wrenches, and, and it's one of these special fittings. You've seen them, right? With these wonderful, pretty constructed materials come with. So, th so these things were my best friend yesterday. I mean, I spent more time with these things yesterday than I would ever care to spend. And, you know, I kept thinking during the day, I'm like, man, you know, surely there's a drill bit uh, that fits this. And, but I didn't want to stop and go to Lowe's and get one, so I just kept going, kept working hard by hand, you know, not quite a blister, but almost there. Have you been there? Say amen. A lot of terms on this. And I kept wondering, you know, how is a five-hour project taking a 10-hour project, and I kept thinking, you know, man, a drill bit would probably save me, you know, quite a bit of time. And so at the end of the day, when I'm packing up, guess what I found? I found these wonderful, not one package, but two packages of drill bits in the box. Imagine that, that they would put a drill bit in the box to help, help with that out. I mean, I, I hope I'm not the only one that's been there. So I brought these to you today, not even open. I mean, they are still sealed in the package. And you know what, what multiplied my time yesterday uh, by trying to do some things without fully reading the directions, perhaps. Although, I pledge to you, I never saw the directions that there was a drill bit in there. I'm going to go back and reread them to be sure. Uh, but I imagine, you know, what, what took me so much time and so many twists and so many turns how much easier would it have been if, if I just opened the package? Man, oh man, that would have been so much easier yesterday. Wow, imagine that. And I wonder as we think about Sarah's story today, how, how much, um, how much, I don't want to say easy because the story of faith is never easy, but how much more smoothly could our story go if, if, if we just open the package that God has placed before us? How, how much better could things go for us if we would just, um, like Sarah, you know, turn to God in faith and trust what God says and follow his instruction book and and lean upon his promises and trust his promises. You know, a, a lot of God's promises to us are like an unopened package of valuable tools that we could really use in life. Amen? And so I want to encourage you today to know that Sarah is the promised mother. And I want to invite you today to open God's promises in your life, whether you are a parent, Single parents, married couples, single, divorced, widowed, widower, whatever the case may be. I want to invite you to open God's promises in your life today. You know that just as Sarah was the promised mother, so today your story too involves promises of God's presence, promises of God's power, promises of God's purpose for your life, and promises. And I'd like today to open the promises of God in your life. And like Sarah, I pray that your story too is a story of God's promise, presence, power, purpose.
Would you stand with us as we sing together this closing hymn? You'll see the words in your bulletin. Um, would you stand with us as we sing today face to face with Christ? So 
Amanda, I just wanted to thank God for you today. And as a church, we wanted to take a moment to recognize you for the volunteer work that you've given. Um, you know, I, I know that Joe and Fred have also uh, been with me, you know, every Sunday through the pandemic of online ministry. And I thank them for that as well. But Amanda was often the person that might be down here on the other side of the camera, just a few feet away from me. Or sometimes we'd be up here with the camera set up. I um, kind of feel sorry for her because she's probably the one person that had to watch me preach, uh, either in person or through a camera. So I'm sorry for that, Amanda, because um, you, you, you've watched, I think, almost every sermon, whether you wanted to or not. So thank you for everything that you've done. And uh, we have a card for you today, and we also have a couple of gift cards in here to give to you. So would you come and let us recognize you for just a moment, please? And would you give Amanda a hand? Thank you for being with us today.